welcome to uh, this uh, edition, this episode of uh, Ubuntu Beast the Unix Tell. We are back. Yep, that's right. As I was saying in the BTS vlogs, we are coming back. We did reformulate because we have new content. That's right. We've got new content on here. We are going to do QA on Android. Our first QA engineering is going to be with the uh, with the uh, browser Dolphin. Uh, my particular choice with Dolphin is that uh, it allows you to be independent from uh, YouTube, the YouTube app. And this is kind of what's important to me. You know, yeah, YouTube has its app out there, but for those of you who don't like the YouTube app and prefer to watch the uh, YouTube videos uh, within the browser on the mobile site, then you need a browser that's independent of the YouTube app. And unfortunately, every time a, 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 a browser adds the option to use the YouTube app in, the YouTube app takes over, and what happens? The choice to use the YouTube app or to watch it in uh, the browser itself is taken away. And this is something I don't like. And that's one of the reasons why I moved from Opera to uh, Dolphin. Anyways, let's get started. The way you're going to see the uh, episode numbering work out is uh, we're going to use a different uh, formula. And that's because we're still really within a, you know, a development schedule. We're still developing um, uh, Ubuntu BSD and Exitel. We're not in full production yet. Uh, so to deal with that, what we're going to do is we're going to give you the, the week of the year. So this is the third week of 2014. So you will see WK30 times 2014. That is how the episode is numbered. So that gives you that idea here. And in this episode, uh, in other episodes, uh, as we move along, is that I wanted to do something different. I won't, don't want to do the standard uh, uh, Android or Linux uh, uh, YouTube show. I don't want to do a review show. What I want to do is I want to, uh, f for uh, those of you who are new to YouTube, new to uh, Android, new to Linux, and I should say that that's where we're going with Linux and uh, Linux and and Android. For those of you who are Linux, new to Linux and Android. Uh, I want to make it as easy and accessible for the entry level people as it is for uh, people who are out there who are doing more advanced work. Uh, and the thing is, is that uh, I don't know if there's a lot of shows out there like that. That's not trying to trying to find our niche here. And that being said, uh, I am a developer. I'm a researcher. I'm a scientist. I'm building my own uh, robot called uh, Cyborg Alpha. Uh, I'm moving towards cybernetics. So that's the area of research that, uh, in terms of the computer science, that's the area of research that I am most interested in. And I've been working on it now for oh, several years. The path I've chosen is uh, I'm going from Android to Ubuntu. Basically, uh, when I first got onto Android, one of the things I liked about Android is that it was advertised to be basically a Linux. But when I've gotten into it and went into the uh, into the different devices, what I found out is, yeah, it's a lot like Linux. It's basically a Linux kernel. But what's happened has been modified enough that in many ways, Android violates the open desktop policy. It's not an open source type of thing. You have the open source kernel but the rest of it, depending on the device you have, is proprietary and closed sourced. And so what happens is, yet, is that the potential for Android to be as powerful as the open source, uh, as an open source device could be, is there. It's never fully developed. And they were supposed to, from what I was reading, uh, from, four, from uh, at the time of 4.0, Ice Cream Sandwich, the developers at Google seem to think seem to be thinking that they were going to try and unite the uh, Android and Linux platform. Linux platform. In other words, they're going to bring Android f more properly into the Linux fold. But that hasn't happened yet. That, the, 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 we're at four point four right now, and that hasn't happened. What I have seen is a lot more proprietary development going on in Android, and I kind of see that that in many cases they're dragging their feet 
uh, if they want to go there, go into that uh, that the United the United de Desktop environment under Linux, the open open source desktop, uh, then they're really dragging their feet, but they're really you know going very very slowly. It's almost like they don't want to really go there. Uh, so my choice is well, if that's the case, there then we have an option here as a community to go and develop this. We can develop the path to uh, to Android development, uh, through Linux development, a along the Android route. So I sat down, I looked at uh, Android, I looked at Linux, and my favorite uh, Linux distro that I like the best is Ubuntu. I went down and read a whole bunch about all these other different distros, including Red Hat, uh, Fedora, uh, BSD, and there's a whole host of other sub... Um, uh, 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 sub uh, distros depending on these sources. Ubuntu, Fedora, Red Hat, uh, BSD are I guess what you say, your primaries. Also, uh, I should say mention that there's Debian as well. But basically, you, Debian and, you, and Ubuntu are kind of united because the, uh, Ubuntu is a a fork, a development off of uh, Debian. So, uh, the choice here is to have the root because basically what's happening with Android, the root is gone. It's missing. It's not there. So, the goal is to bring a Ubuntu root to Android. And that, in, in that case there, what happens is that Android becomes the UI for Ubuntu. In other words, it becomes the user interface for Ubuntu or, or another user interface for Ubuntu. Uh, so with Ubuntu as the core, and, and Android as the, as, as the desktop or the user interface, you can then go from there and start integrating uh, Android with X, GNOME, and KDE. Now I left out Unity because even though Unity is uh, uh, Ubuntu's new choice for desktop, uh, I found that U Unity has a significant number of problems still. And I would rather work with the legacies of X, GNOME, and KDE first before I moved into other desktops like Unity. Uh, so the, the question here is going, going to be, uh, where do I go from here? Uh, how long is it going to take me to get there? Uh, so on and so forth. And so basically what we're doing now is... Uh, to get into Android development, I realized that I really had to take a um, a different approach. It's not a matter of saying, oh, let's get down to coding and start coding this. What I wanted to do, and this is sort of what I noticed. So let me just take care of this for a minute here. One of the things I noticed is that um, what happens more often than not, when you're developing, and then I know this with a lot of pro uh, uh, open source programs, uh, there's not a, a lot of attention to uh, what I call the end user experience. In other words, a lot of the QA that could be there and should be there for open source development simply isn't. And I learned this on Android that I realized that there has to be a lot of uh, developed testing. In other words, testing so you have basically, uh, before after your primary coding, you have alpha, then you have beta, but there should be a third. While the product is out there, should be a gamma, and the gamma should be your quality assurance, your quality control uh, when the product is already out there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to start with quality control, looking at the Android user interface, what programs work on there, what they don't, what don't work, on, what doesn't work well on there where are potential problems, where are potential issues, and go down this sort of the, the bug path. The sort of, I try to identify where things have been successfully done and where things have not been successfully done. In other words, you need to, and this is the phase that I'm in right now, I'm in the phase of mapping out the user experience. Because if you're going to create a user interface, you need to understand and take into account the user experience. 
Otherwise, just leave it as a GUI and, and, and that's the way you go. But if you want to make the program, uh, your, your application, your OS, uh, and bring Android fully into uh, an open desktop system or, or should I say a one, a one OS fits all, in other words, you can use uh, uh, Android as an OS, which is basically a, a, a flavor of Linux if you want. Uh, you can use it uh, all the way from your phones to tablets to TVs to uh, desktops to servers. In other words, you can use it across all platforms. And in this open environment, and this is sort of my view of open source, it should be flexible enough and tailorable enough that you can really take this into a, into a, into a, a direction that normally things haven't been taken. In other words, what you want to do is you want to be able to take the operating system. This is specifically for Linux, and this is for, for Linux user. A Linux user is the person who wants to uh, be more hands-on. Most users want out-of-the-box already set up solutions. That's Windows and Mac. If you want a custom tailored system, if you want, so let's say in terms of the fashion world, you want a hot couture, you want, you want the, you know, the fashion design, you want the cutting edge, you want to tailor your own systems. This is Linux, and Linux should be allowed. You should be able to on Linux for the user, uh, starting at the user level, be able to tailor and configure Linux to any system you wish. And then integrate the system as well. You, you can, matter of fact, Linux should be integratable. In other words, the Linux environment, all the systems together, working in their different environment, should be integratable. And this is the user experience. So if you don't understand the user experience, if you don't start picking it apart and understanding it, getting down and coding and looking for the specifics that you need to deal with these user interface issues is going to be missing. So where we're starting off and where we're particularly leaning to right now is we're in the Android environment and what I've done is I've moved over to and added now I've, I've got a uh, IPTV system now uh, in the works uh, I have sort of cut my cable here so I don't have cable TV I'm using IPTV as my uh, main TV source and one of the things I've noticed about IPTV is that you're dealing with uh, a series, not really a series of programs, but you're dealing with a whole new environment. And just like any new environment, there's a lot of unknowns. But at the same time, because the environment is excited, and a lot of people enjoy this environment. You have a situation that has popped up where as the environment becomes more and more popular, the majors, your big corporations, want to come in and take everything over. They, they're going to do what they normally do. They come in and they take over. They want a monopoly of things. And so what happens is you now have a situation where IPTV as a standard is taken over by the majors and now you're not left with an open system, but you're left with a closed system. And this is what we're heading to now with IPTV. We're heading towards a closed system for IPTV. And there needs to be a community effort just in the way there was for open source. There needs to be a, uh, a, a, an equally uh, community-based uh, effort in open IPTV. In other words, we need an open IPTV. We need an open environment in the IPT and IPTV environment uh, just the way you have an open source, an open desktop, uh, open servers, open uh, web servers, all these things that are that are in the open source environment, IPTV needs to be brought into the open environment, needs to be brought, be brought into this sort of mindset that we need to develop for the public space. Because if you don't do that, if you allow the corporations to take over, What's going to happen is you're going to end up with monopolies. You're going to end up with a very tight, uh, inappropriately defined space. And then here's the problem. The Internet was based and designed to support openness. What happens when you stop supporting this openness? When you, when you go into proprietary areas, proprietary networks? 
I mean, this, this is what, before the internet, there were proprietary networks. One network couldn't talk to the other because one network didn't want to be involved with the other network. And it was the internet that opened the environment up. And so what happens is the majors, these large corporations, want to go back to the closed environment again. They want to go back to a closed network system that keeps everybody on their own particular network. But as soon as you do that, as soon as you start closing off this environment, you end up destroying the network, that you, the internet, in the way that it functions. You end up destroying it. It, it goes. It, it slips through your fingers. And all of a sudden, you no longer have it. And this is sort of where we have to deal with open, uh, uh, with open IP TV. We have to prevent the majors from sort of simply taking over and, and locking everything off. This is what's occurring now, and I'll bring this out more uh, later on in other uh, episodes. Because right now, because I said the important thing here right now is QA engineering, the, this leads us into our last segment here, our last section. And the last section here is this. Um, as I said, working on IPTV, in the IPTV environment, when you have your television, uh, Android as your IPTV provider, in terms of it, the box that you have there, because you basically, an IPTV is basically a computer that's hooked up to a TV, and you're watching uh, your television programs, your entertainment through the internet. And... The OS that sits on the box really determines what you can and can't do. The box that I got, because I do everything refurbished here, is Android. It wound up being an Android gingerbread. It's only got 512 megabytes of RAM on it. And so now that means we have to uh, sit down and work on a way to get it working properly. And that is the uh, Dolphin uh, browser. Dolphin browser brings, found, I found out through all the different testing, brings in the best uh, internet experience in terms of watching what's out, whatever's on the media out there. That's your best experience through the Dolphin browser. There are other apps on there. I'll show, be talking about that later. But right now, we're going to be focusing on Dolphin. And one of the particular problems that I had with Dolphin is they had this program that, that went with it called Jetpack that sort of helped smooth out a lot of the bumps along the way for Dolphin, particularly on, on lower devices. But what they did is they ended up doing what uh, what Opera did. They ended up bringing in to Jetpack the option to uh, to uh, use the YouTube app. As soon as that occurred, it stopped functioning properly. It forced you over to the YouTube app uh, to watch your YouTube videos, even though you wanted to stay on the uh, mobile site, and kind of messed up your experience. So I removed Jetpack and reconfigured the system so they could operate on Dolphin. And that was the two video tests that I had shown in the BTS I did two video tests in Dolphin uh, on IP TV, and I did it in the BTS vlogs. You're going to watch these now, and I'll come back right afterwards, and I'll talk about that. This is a test segment for uh, Ubuntu BSD units at all, as I stated before. Uh, we're going to be doing this on a regular basis uh, in Ubuntu BSD units at all. But uh, this uh, particular video test is going to go into, uh, into uh, what you call it, uh, BTS vlogs. So here we are, we're, we're, in the, uh, uh, we're on the uh, IPTV, we're on the, uh, dev the, the device, and it's a gingerbread device. We're in the browser Dolphin. And if you can look at, up at the uh, the URL button here, is the URL bar, it says here that we're at m.youtube.com forward slash home. That's what's in the URL bar. But as you can see, we're actually on a person's page. Yeah, we're on the, the channel. We're on the Mommy and Gracie Show channel. And the, uh, the, the, uh, the, what's it called? The URL hasn't properly updated. In order to update it, what you have to do is you click uh, Reload, and you see that the uh, browser is reloading. There you go, and now we're on the Mommy and Gracie show. There we go. See, now it's showing the proper uh, the proper 
URL. So let's go down below. And this is the problem that I had dealt with earlier. So I'm going to go with uh, Doll Hunter Finds Light uh, Camera Action vamp uh, Vampirine uh, Gorgon. So let's go here. Okay, so we're in that. And you see what happened here is that, once again, the URL didn't change. We're on the right page, and I'll show you that uh, even though we're on, this URL is showing incorrectly here, we can indeed watch this video. And this video is actually... Here we go. It's so cold, I forgot to film it. So oh, 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 this is it. Goodness. We're in the video. Oh my goodness, it's so cold. Okay. Uh, you see uh, this here? Uh, yes. We are in uh, we are I'm in uh, MX now. Player. Right. Pause this. Right no pause. Yeah, we do have a pause here. Yeah. Oh. You see here, we're, we're actually inside of we're inside of uh, what you call it. We're inside of uh, MX Player and not see. in I the see. actual. Uh, and I see. I see. The actual what you call it? The. Caddy. The. Uh, the uh, uh, vi not in Flash Player, really? and we're not in uh, YouTube Player, the YouTube uh, app. So let's get out of this. So this has worked successfully. This has been a successful workaround. We still have the option now to thumbs up, and this is again showing the incorrect URL. We can do to a save uh, playlist. YouTube stroll. There you go. And but yet the um, URL bar is not showing correctly. So let's refresh this page. We refresh the page, and there we go. We're on the video. All right. This is the uh, second test. Uh, that I'm doing here, the second video test. The first video test I did it on a monopod because uh, I didn't think I was able to get a tripod in here, but now I've got a tripod in here, and so now we're going to film uh, what happens in Dolphin. What I'm going to do is I'm on uh, SS Sniper Wolf, uh, I'm on one video page. I'm going to go to the second uh, video here to Happy Wheels and I want you to watch and take a look at what's happening here on the URL. This is what youtube.com uh, forward slash question mark V L X S Z G so we go to the next one and what we see here is that the URL has not changed. So this is the thing here. The URL has not changed. The um, thing is, I'm in Dolphin, but I don't have Jetpack installed. I uninstalled Jetpack because when you install Jetpack with the new option for YouTube, the YouTube app, it automatically directs you to the YouTube app. In other words, whereas the YouTube, the YouTube app option, in the new YouTube app option inside of uh, inside of uh, what you call it, inside of the, uh, Jetpack, is not an option. It forces you to you to the YouTube app, and for those of you who uh, are trying to get away from the YouTube app, and this is one of the reasons why I came to op to to Dolphin. I had initially been on Opera, uh, and then uh, Opera started changing its uh, what matter or way it handled uh, its uh, the YouTube videos, and it started sending you to the YouTube app, and so I came over to Dolphin to to to, to do the same thing here. Now, what I've done is uh, I uninstalled the, the, the Jetpack app when it started malfunctioning and sending me to the YouTube app. And I just now have Dolphin running. And what I've done is I've assigned Dolphin to not use, uh, because it didn't come up with the option to use uh, the Flash Player, but it did come up with the option, option to use MX Player. So I defaulted it now. It's always going to use MX Player, so that's what we're going to see here. We're going to click on the first, uh, on the video. Hey guys, what's up? We and here it is here. Happy Wheels today, and I'm really sick today. I want to know if I'm sick. And here I'm is the, uh, the, the, uh, in my eye. If you don't want to die, just pause this for a minute here. Eye, so. Okay, it's paused. This pause feature 
is not available in the flat. If you use a flat player, you can't pause it. However, now because we are in uh, a a MX player, even with the ads, uh, we have a, a, a full ability to pause. We can change the dynamics of the screen here. We, if, if something is not uh, uh, not HD, we can actually make it and, and actually stretch it out to become part of the full screen here. Uh, and the thing is, we now have the option to pause. If you're in, uh, if you played, if you used this before, and you were using uh, Flash Player, even though you had the pause button down here, what had happened is. You, when you hit pause, it went back to uh, the uh, to the uh, YouTube page, but it doesn't do that here. It's still playing in here. It's still playing. It is, and so you just click on uh, play really again, really and we're back to playing. Really and I'll show you another nice feature that that happens play. in here. I'll take my frustration. Out uh, of this. Let's bring this forward. So. Okay, we got a few minutes left in here. So he's playing his, he's playing the game here. Oh my leg! Okay, that video is over. And it, this is nice. It brings you right back to the uh, YouTube player. If you were on Flash, it wouldn't bring you back to the to the YouTube channel uh, on Dolphin. And I should say it brings you back to Dolphin again. It brings you back to your YouTube page. Now this is this is the this is the mobile page. I prefer using the mobile page to the app. The mobile page is much better than the YouTube app is. So I'm gonna click on like, and I'm gonna add it to a list. Which you can all do on here now. There we go. But if you notice the, all this here, that this has not changed at all. So the YouTube, the, the URL hasn't changed. So I'm going to refresh. I'm going to refresh the page. There you go. Page is refreshed. New URL. Same video. In other words, the proper URL for this video here is now updated. If we bring out the uh, the button bar, guess what happens? Because it wasn't on the proper URL, the uh, thumbs up click is gone. So, uh, and the thing is, is that even if we go back into subscriptions, let's go back into subscription to show you this here. Let's see if we can actually find it, if it pops up at all. Here we go. Um, now I had watched this one before. Again, watched is not. It does not show watched across here, but I've watched it at all. Uh, we just watched. I just watched this one, and it's sort of uh, the one after it. And that again, it doesn't show watched across here. I watched this one make. And again, it doesn't show watched across here. In other words. It has an updated, and oh, well, here's the thing here. You see this ghosting? See that uh, little ghosting back here? As I move up, there's that little uh, graphic there from Show More Videos. So there, is, there are some problems with Dolphin, uh, but then you know what? You know what? They're not bad. They're not bad problems. These because they, 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 they are they have uh, workarounds. They were gonna go gonna do what we're doing. See, there's the queue again. Uh, there are workarounds. Uh, and the problems are not as significant as one would think because even though it doesn't show watched, what it does do is that when you do click thumbs up and put it into a playlist, it does record that it has been added to a playlist. Uh, I can actually show you this. Let's see if we can actually go see this here. we got one minute left. So let's do playlist very quickly. Uh, we just did... Uh, Here's my channel. YouTube stroll. And where's the one we just saw here?
Ugh. This has overclick problems too. So we can't see it on here. Uh, what happens unfortunately when you're in uh, the YouTube app, you really have a limitation as to how these things go. And they're not always in the day you kind of, they're not always in the order that you watch them. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to, uh, uh, to you want to be a tell This is our last segment here. We just watched two, uh, video tests from, um, that I had done earlier that I had, uh, put in, uh, the BTS vlogs. And this is where the lesson comes up. Yes, I needed to do. I needed to uh, use the tripod, but the differences between the two videos are something that's not seen. Is I had the first video, I was having a lot of problems. In the first test video, and the problems that uh, were ha what's happening is there was a lot of stability issues with Dolphin. At least I thought there was stability issues with Dolphin. What I had done in between the uh, video test one and video test two. I had to sit down and sort of think about what was going on on the on there, and I did a debug test. And I went to see what was causing some of the problems, what may have been causing some of the problems, if it wasn't Dolphin. And what I had found is that uh, when I installed a particular uh, access to media, particularly uh, Greek media and uh, foreign media, uh, this is European media, it had installed, uh, it recommended to install this uh, video player called Vitam, uh, I think, uh, Vitamo. And I installed it, but it didn't seem to do anything. So I left it on there, forgetting about it. So what I decided to do is go in there, see what I had in my memory, in terms of on the memory, on the, on the, on the Android device, and take out all the stuff that simply wasn't necessary. And I found this this video program in there that I wasn't using. It was this Vitamo stuff. It wasn't even showing up in the apps as, as, an, as an app to get into it. So I simply deleted it. Because I already had MX Player on there with all its codecs and everything else. Uh, as soon as I removed it, rebooted the device, tested out Dolphin, and Dolphin started working perfectly again. And not really perfect, but, you know, good enough that it started, you know, it, it wasn't slow, it wasn't sluggish. Um, you could watch videos in the MX, MX Player without any particular issues. And the thing is, while it wasn't using Flash, what it started doing is started uh, allowing the MX Player to control how you interacted with the video. In Flash Player, if you pressed pause, it simply dropped you back down to the browser's... Um, uh, YouTube page. The, you know, you, you, you go to the YouTube page where the video is. You go to the video page. You click on the video. It brings you to the video. Click on pause, and the flash player brings you back to the YouTube page as if you hadn't watched the video. It doesn't. It doesn't save your place. It doesn't pause the video for you. It simply stops the video. With MX Player, you click the pause button, and it actually pauses the video for you. So you can go. So you can behave with MX player inside of YouTube just as if you were watching uh, the TiVo you can use, you sort of use it to stop live TV and replay things and move things forward move things back again if you want to replace something in other words the uh, MX player inside of Dolphin using MX player with Dolphin gives you a lot more functionality that than, than you know than I had seen before and so I thought, well, whoa, is this something that's unique to, you know, to this particular Android device? Is, you know, what, is there a device issue? Because this Android, this Android device, the gingerbread uh, device, uh, was only 512 megabytes, and it, it was done on my TV. And I had it on my TV. I still have it on my TV now. And I've been able to, since I installed it and got it work, every, just about every week I'm able to find ways to improve the performance of the device. So I said, well, what happens if you have Dolphin on this device? And, and, and so my, my decide, decision was remove the YouTube app from all my devices, all my Android devices. 
So I, use, I, I, I have already done it on the on IPTV. There's no, uh, there's no uh, YouTube app on there anymore. And I removed from the two devices that I'm primarily using now. There's a third still in the configuration on the configuration desk. But the two that I primarily use right now, I removed the YouTube app to see if there was a problem. And it wasn't, there wasn't a problem. Dolphin, if, as long as you have MX Player in on here and some other, play, some other player on here, the video player, handles everything fine you don't with dolphin you don't need the youtube app and the thing is is that the way dolphin works on here and as compared to jetpack this is also 512k this device here and dolphin works fine with jetpack on here but on the android device for the tv the gingerbread device i had to remove jetpack what's the difference on this device and the two uh, and the other, other device like this, I could either remove or disable um, the YouTube app. On the uh, on the uh, gingerbread device, I could I could roll back the YouTube app to its factory install point, but I couldn't disable it or nor could I remove it. In other words, it won't allow you to remove the YouTube app. So the, uh, in that situation where you're not allowed to remove the YouTube app and you can't disable it, you have to remove Dolphin. I mean, you have to remove Jetpack from Dolphin. In other words, uh, normally you'd use Jetpack with Dolphin on a mobile device. If the device can't remove the YouTube app, you have to remove and uninstall Jetpack. Right now, there's no workaround for it. I don't see any form of working, working, way of working around with it. Uh, I will check to see if there is, maybe they remove that YouTube option in the future. Debt, debt but right now, uh, with the device I have up there, because it is a, a pain in the butt to do reconfiguration uh, on these different devices, I'm going to stick with Dolphin. And this is, this is what I said in um, the BTS vlog. Dolphin actually works pretty well uh, on a 512 megabyte system with gingerbread on it. You, for my development choices, if, if, if I were the end user, going to develop from the end user's perspective, you want to work with the least likely device and your weakest device. If something works on your weakest device, if you have extra power going from on up from from your weakest device, then your if you if you if you if your product performs well on here, it's going to perform well everywhere else. If it does not perform well on the bottom, then you can have, you can expect to have problems all the way throughout. So you always aim for a low level, and this is why this Android device, along with the IPTV, is where I'm going to be developing most of my alpha work. All the alpha work, all the initial coding is going to be occurring here. And then it migrates up to the more powerful platforms. This is this is um, uh, 512 megabyte. Uh, this is 4.1. The IPTV is uh, uh, 512 megabyte uh, gingerbread. And so you've got a good uh, base end to work with, so that you can say, okay, my app works well on these low devices. And you might, and so you can increase the range your your app will work on by using uh, the low devices. If it works well there, then okay, yeah, it works well. Let's continue along this development path. And that's what I'm saying. Dolphin works very well. I'm going to be keeping Dolphin on the Gingerbread on IPTV. Dolphin uh, is going to be my choice of browser. There's not going to be Jetpack on it. It's just going to be Dolphin. But on the Android devices, I'll be using Jetpack and Dolphin. And Jetpack is made by the same same people who do Dolphin. It's kind of like an add-in. It's sort of like a uh, a more precise fitting for an Android device, if you want to call it that. Uh, but at some point in time, if 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 they develop Dolphin well enough, Jet Jetpack can become redundant. In other words, it, they may not actually need Jetpack if Dolphin develops well enough on a 512k device uh, and stays compatible. With gingerbread on up, you know, let's say do it, do it 2.2 on up for your uh, Android development. If that's your case, there, I think that's your that's the best bet. That's where you should be aiming. But we'll see where it goes. I don't know exactly how they're going to view these videos. I don't know how 
they're going to use them. If they're going to use them, I don't know if this is something that they want or don't want. Uh, but uh, this is how I'm going to be helping out. Uh, <laughs> so I will do uh, more te more um, videos for next week. I'll be doing some more comparison. I should be doing comparison between the IP TV performance for Dolphin and the uh, performance of Jetpack and Dolphin on the devices. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, I'll be talking more about IPTV as well, the whole issue with IPTV and the open source. So, anyways, uh, that's it for this week uh, for uh, Ubuntu PSD Unit et al. I hope to see you for uh, week four. I, I'm looking forward to working on that episode. I'm, right now, after I finish doing this, I'm going to be doing the, uh, uh, the production notes for episode four. So, hopefully, we are now on schedule. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye bye. Democratic Earth. Earth.